929, Smiley Morning Show. The great Chris Cornell has joined us in studio. Let's give it up for Chris. Chris, good morning, sir. All right, thank you. Welcome to the Smiley Morning Show studios here in Indianapolis. Thank you. How was the concert last night? The concert was great. Was it good? Yeah. Good crowd? Great crowd, lots of people. Um, really warm reception. You know, it's a, it's been a great tour, i got to say. Um, Lincoln Park, who else, who's all involved? Lincoln Park? Lincoln Park, you? the Me, the Bravery. Bravery. Um, a band called Ashes Divide, a band called Street Drum Corps, which is a very interesting band. Um, mm. Why do you say that? Well, the, they do a lot of really exciting percussive stuff, you know, like beating on garbage cans and, you know, different syncopated and regular drums, but they have songs, you know, and a, yeah. and a singer who's actually a drummer as well, and, and uh, they're just really... Um, entertaining. Um, this band called the Treyu that that uh, is headlining the Revolution stage, which is the other stage that kind of starts the day out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a, a day event, right? It yeah. started early on. Let's see, that's this was last night. I guess. Yeah, yeah, just it's, yesterday yeah, it afternoon. Starts, it starts really early, and, and uh, we we've, we've been kind of mixing it up and and doing guest appearances on each other's sets and oh, stuff like cool. that. And, that's fun. And, uh, it's been great. Well, look forward to it. here in a second. We're going to actually track. We're going to. Kind of world, radio always has a world premiere, but I'm sure it's just been a, around. But uh, you've no, it's, a, it's a world premiere. It's a world premiere! First time We're the ever. first time ever! But you've collaborated with uh, Timbaland. That's exactly right. How about that? How, how did this happen? Um, it was kind of whimsical. Can I use that word? Yeah, whimsical. I like that word. That's a good one on radio. Yeah. You can use whimsical all day. I want to use it. It was whimsical. I was on tour for uh, Carry On, which was... The, my, uh, the solo record I did right after uh, Audio Slave, and uh, w we were looking to do a couple remixes. And uh, my brother-in-law Nick, who uh, he owns a club in Paris, he's always trying to get rock music. He's uh, trying to get the French to get into rock music. He's like, man, give me some remixes so I can play them in the club. Sure. And and uh, I, basically, I was like, okay, but you know, tell me who, because I don't know, you know anybody good in that in that world. And he he's like a huge Timbaland fan. He said, that's the guy that gets rock music, that's the guy I like that gets everything, he's a genius. Um, so I, I got a hold of him and he wasn't really interested in remixing something that already existed. He was like full force into let's do some original material on the fan, let's go do a couple songs. And I thought, well, if we're going to go to a studio, let's make a whole album. Because I'm a solo artist and I can do anything I want, sure. let's do that. And he was. I sort of expected, uh, well, I'm because he, he's a very busy guy. Mm -hmm. I, I kind yeah. of expected, like, well, you know, I can do. I got time to do a couple songs. He was like, I'll push everything aside and and we'll do an album. And then, so we did. Everyone said, no, he can make an album in six weeks. And and I, my thought was, there's no way. Um, but I know I can. And I got into the studio with him, and he had the guy can make an album in six weeks, no, no problem. No problem. Um, and we did that. We had like in five weeks, we had like twenty songs, and we had to like pare that down. But we had such a good chemistry in the studio, and it was there was no um, going in there to try to make top forty hits or anything. We were going in there just to have fun, be creative, and make an album. And and I have always had complete creative freedom. And once that was sort of resounding, he started getting really into the idea of making it more ambitious. Piece and we ended up working on it for six months, turning it into something kind of like Pink Floyd's The Wall, where the music never ends once it starts. All the songs yeah, just kind of flow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've made like um, single song edits that can be played on the radio, but really at some point I think I'm gonna um, put the whole album on my MySpace so people can for like a 24-hour window listen to the whole thing from yeah. beginning to end as many times as they want. Would we have to watch a movie together. with it? No, but <laughs> my, will it match up to a movie? My challenge, Old school. <laughs> my challenge to you and your listeners is that once the album comes out, go buy the album and then just experiment with yeah, it. Yeah, find try a to, movie. Find that one. Works. I'm thinking, and I don't know why I thought this. I uh, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking Blade Runner is going to be the one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I have no idea why, but I'm flying in there, flipping in the air, yeah. and doing. <laughs> Well, it's really cool because, like, in this day and age with iTunes, everybody just, you know, pays a dollar and gets one song, and I think that there's sort of, that we've sort of lost the enjoying an entire album. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And you know what, I yeah, part of that's the fault of record companies and the fault of bands making such crappy albums that they put one or two good songs on it, mm -hmm. and then... Why would anyone want to listen to any right. other one? No. If you go on iTunes and you look at sort of like the popularity meter, the 
uh, of each individual song on an album, the best bands and artists that make great albums, those meters are high on every single song. Mm -hmm. And the ones that have just uh, are sort of like one hit wonders or overnighters that don't have a lot of like experience making great records, you'll look, you'll you'll see there's one song people download and the rest of it nobody even bothers with. I can't wait to hear this new stuff here. I think this is a good time to maybe play one song here. We'll take a break, come back, do another song, and talk more. But uh, this is awesome. I mean, from Soundgarden, I mean, you uh, you were the guy, you know, back in the day and teamed up with Eddie Vedder and through the years and then through uh, with Audio Slave. And this is your fourth album, right? The same solo deal. This, is my th this will be my third so solo album. Um, and uh, Temple of the Dog, which was sort of like, it started out kind of like that and then ended up being, um, you know, a tribute project where I, where I worked with guys that ended up being guys in Pearl Jam, as well as Matt Cameron, who was in, in Soundgarden. And uh, I've done a lot of other solo stuff, solo work for movies over the years and different things like that. So I've done a lot of, a lot of different things. Yeah, you kick ass. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the name of this first track we're going to hear? This is going to be Long Gone. Long Gone. Let's take a listen to it. It's Chris Cornell. It's on the Smiley Morning Show. Z99.5. Take a listen. New music. New music. 